Ready, Freddy? Let's do it. London, England, 2018. Known for its princes, princesses, giant clocks, the Beatles, Harry Potter, football, and the birthplace of a little band called Queen, I ventured to the other side of the pond to talk to the talent behind Bohemian Rhapsody. While checking out the Carnaby Street lighting in honor of the band, attend the premiere at Wembley Arena where the band performed famously for Live Aid in 1985, and even got caught up in an anti-Brexit demonstration while trying to get to my hotel. So put on your crown and leotard as we take you into the world of Freddie Mercury, Queen, and the film that seeks to capture their glory, Bohemian Rhapsody. Hey guys, Paul Schreier from Dribblo.com. I am here in London, England, about to talk to the cast and crew of Bohemian Rhapsody, including Rami Malek. Now, Rami is the one that transforms himself into Freddie Mercury, and I'm going to find out exactly how he did that. And we're also going to find out what their favorite Queen songs are. So. Let's take a look. So, Rami, I gotta start with you real quick. What convinced you that you could play one of the greatest rock stars of all time? It's <laughs> a good question. Uh, you know, it took a while to, to convince me. I, uh, you know, it's a massive, immense shoes to fill. It means so much to everyone, and everyone has their own particular appreciation for him. So, uh, it was daunting, but I thought if I had enough time, if I had enough time to prepare, I could do it. For all of you guys, this is you guys. Have, this is an immense experience for all of you guys. As, as like you're basically coming together, you're create, recreating this band, you're recreating this music. Uh, I'm curious for you guys, from your perspective, what do you think Freddie Mercury would think of this film if he were to see it, and what do you, what would you want him to take away from it? <laughs> uh, I certainly hope he would love it. Uh, <laughs> that's obvious. Sure. I, 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 you know what I would love? I would love for him to come out of the theater and make some, maybe like, you know, I don't know, cheeky joke or like dirty joke, something just to like break the tension of everyone wondering what he thought of it, you know, <laughs> and just sort of like have a laugh right after it and say, come on, let's go get a drink. Yeah, and then <laughs> take us for drinks. That would be the, that would be the uh, best response. <laughs> you know, I was uh, talking to, to Brian May, and he, he said, I just saw the poster on, uh, on a bus, and uh, he's like, Freddie would be so tickled at, at seeing that. He's like, we used to, it reminded him we used to ride the number nine bus uh, to go see their agents and talk about why they were weren't making money, but they were still selling out concerts, which is something that happens in the film as well, that, that uh, same conversation. But he said he would be so tickled by this, so I could only hope that he would be. So what do you guys, for you guys, what do you think, or why do you think, rather, that Queen's music has endured so long? Like, what is it about Queen's music that creates such a lasting legacy? They didn't really confine themselves to one specific genre or one specific style. They weren't necessarily concerned about being loved by critics or, you know, um, things like that. So they were fearless in their attempt to just express themselves for who they were and, who, and what they had to offer as four individuals in this band. They're the only band whose every member has written a number one single. And so it means that you've got a, a band that can write songs like Another One Bites The Dust, and that same band wrote a song like You're My Best Friend or something like that. They're all. It's that um, variety that gives them longevity, I think. So, favorite Queen song? I need to know from each of you, what is your favorite Queen song? I've, I've been singing the game all day, or play the, play the game. Play the game. Sorry, the, the album's in the game. Um, not my favorite favorite, but that's the one today that it I'm is, obsessed with. It is a great song, yeah. What about Sa you guys? Save Me? Save Me, yes. okay. Yeah, I think today's I've heard favorite. Save me. That's, a good, uh, that's a good way Lucy to Lucy also said save me, favorite. so oh, that one must she? be in the water. Mm. Uh, I'm going to say doing all right today. That's all my right. song for today. I'm going to go different to what I've been saying today and change it to the Prophet song. Yeah, Prophet song. I love that one. Awesome. Hey, guys, the movie is, is awesome. Thank and, you so uh, much. It's great that you guys were able to bring this to life. So. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. very much. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. I love the way you move on stage. Belongs to you. Take 
can't you see what you could be? So Mary Austin, she is faced with a very complex relationship uh, with Freddie Mercury in this. And I'm curious if like how you connected what made their bond so strong. I think it was just, I mean, Brian May was my main kind of source of information on this relationship. He was actually the person who introduced them. So he knew them both as individuals before they were able to kind of impact each other. So he could see very clearly the influence they had. And I think the thing that was the kind of key and core to them was this foundation, very strong foundation of love and respect and clarity of sight that not many people are granted. Um, they really understood and saw each other and and, and wanted to encourage them to, each other to be the kind of most truthful version of themselves. And so with that, we're able to, I guess, be more pragmatic and open-minded about the trajectory and the kind of unforeseen trajectory of a, of a relationship. So you didn't meet the actual... No. Because she's kind of, I guess, famously reclu reclusive in, in this sense. So how did you build that character based on not really being able to connect, to, to actually speak with her and draw that perspective? It was really daunting, and, and you never want to cross the line into intrusiveness, with, right. especially with the material that we're dealing with, with the, with the experiences we're dealing with. Um, so my first port of call was to watch all the interviews she's done and read all the interviews she's done to try and gauge what she's been happy to be open and candid about. Um, and then also try and gauge from there what the kind of younger version of her how the younger version of her would have approached that because of course all the interviews you, she, you see she's speaking with the kind of overview of hindsight right so it was a strange kind of balance but always wanted wanting to tell the most honest version while maintaining that respect for as you say the very private person so Rami Malik completely invests himself in this role what is it like just being on set and kind of watching him enter that realm of Freddie Mercury it's wild because he just he just disappears and when he walks on as Freddie there is zero percent Rami left uh, and I've never seen that before and I mean there's no one quite like I mean there is no one like Freddie and no one with that energy so to kind of transport yourself into that frame of mind and in into that kind of like I say electric energy it was remarkable and a lot of fun to be around so why do you think Queen's music has endured as long as it has, and what is your favorite Queen song? I think it's endured the test of time because because of how undefinable it is. You can't really put it in a genre, um, and even now there is no sound like Queen. Uh, and my favorite song right now is I think "Save Me," just because of the power of that Mercury voice married with those really intimate and quite devastating lyrics. All right. Freddie, concerning your private life. What more do you need to know? I make music. Alan, you play someone who kind of famously is kind of the Judas to uh, Freddie Mercury. So I'm curious for you, how do you get into a mindset of playing a character so that he doesn't come off just as kind of a one-dimensional villain, which is kind of a challenge for a role like this. So how did you, how did you go about that? Uh, it is. I think whenever you play someone who existed, or even if they were still alive, but Paul Prentice passed away, you have an obligation not to make them one-dimensional, because even if someone was evil, you have to ask, were they always? What, what led them to get there? Right. What made them, made them make those choices? I don't believe anyone is truly inherently evil. I think people have moments. And I think the power that Paul Prentice managed to gain over Freddie Mercury made him make some decisions and suddenly turn things for his gain rather than for Freddie's or for the band's. And if you play it that way, rather than it be just completely, this is what I'm going to try and do is ruin this man's life or ruin the band's life. Really, I think what Paul Prentice did, we got in a situation where out of nowhere he had this immense power. And rather than take the responsibility that comes with that, he used it to his own advantage. Uh, so, I mean, obviously you share a lot of scenes with, <clears throat> with Rami Malik. Uh, what is it like just kind of being in that space with him as he transforms into Freddie Mercury and just suddenly being in that environment. Can you talk about that? It genuinely was, uh, as an actor, 
because I think every job you go on to, you can learn something from the people around you always. And watching uh, Rami do that, and he had a, a routine. They had, they all had kind of trigger words, as well, even I did, to get into character. And his was always like, "Well, all right," and that was how he kind of would start off. And he just it was amazing watching him morph into this. But he worked so tirelessly on every bit of uh, Freddie's mannerisms and. When you see someone go into that level of detail, it, it forces you to up your game as well. And suddenly we all found, and we would find videos and little aspects or little traits of everyone, and there's very little of Paul Prenter ever being filmed. But I would find little bits and go, okay, that's, and you use it as a kind of an anchor into trying to create your character. It's a building block from, from there. Why do you think Queen's music uh, has carried such a huge legacy and continues to resonate today? I mean, what do you think it is about the music? Because it's really it good. <laughs> but seriously, you know, sometimes when you listen to stuff today, you're going, that's not going to be around in 10 years. Uh, I don't know, I think there is, but there's something special that, about that band. Sure, it's, it's in the movie when Freddie says, I had all these musicians, and I told them what to do, and they did it. And that's what was wrong. They were just, there was a special, unique mix of those four band members. And what they produced is why we, why we still listen to them today, because they fought each other, they pushed, they were, I don't know, it was a different time though, wasn't it, music? I don't know what's happening these days. I think the world was different though, wasn't it? Uh, favorite Queen song for you? Uh, Under Pressure, it always has been, and it doesn't, doesn't change now. Good. I know, and also because it's Bowie as well. I didn't know it was fancy dress, Fred. You look like an angry lizard. You've got to make an impression, darling. So, tell me, what makes Queen any different from all of the other wannabe rock stars I meet? I'll tell you what it is, Mr. Reed. Yeah! We're four misfits who don't belong together. They're playing for other misfits. They're the outcasts right at the back of the room. We're pretty sure they don't belong either. We belong to them. So Graham, it's taken a, uh, a long time for this story to be told on film. Um, I'm curious, why was it so important that it be told? Well, I think there's so much in, in this story and Freddie's life that is very accessible and relatable to an audience. And when you're telling someone's story, um, especially someone as iconic as Freddie, it's about telling parts, giving parts to an audience that they don't know about him. And a lot of people don't know his story. I remember years ago talking to people, especially in the States, about Freddie Mercury and saying, you know, he was born in Zanzibar and went to school in Mumbai. They had no idea. They all think he was English. <laughs> and so it was little bits like that that, for me, made it a worthwhile story to be told. Uh, so there's many names that have come and gone to play Freddie Mercury throughout the years <laughs> as, as it's taken its path. How, why is Rami Malik, why was he the guy to do this? Oh, he just, he, he had what it needed. He had what it took to become Freddy and came to see me one day and just blew me away with how he transformed himself into Freddie Mercury. And one can't do that if there's not some, something in his DNA that organically came through. That's what I look for, not just an actor performing. And he had it and obviously I think it portrays that on screen. By the way, he was the first guy we ever cast and ever looked for. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Uh, so the film doesn't shy away from like Freddie's challenges, um, you know, his his sexuality, his you know his ailments, everything. Uh, but at the same time, the film leaves you feeling uplifted, and it's it's inspiring. So I'm curious how you found that balance between showing kind of the dark side and then also basically how you found that balance between showing kind of the dark side and then also basically the celebration of Queen. Right, that's why it took so long, was getting that script, script right, getting the screenplay right. He, very complicated life, very, um, a life, Freddie had a lot of layers to him, as you just mentioned. And for me, it was finding the right tone and the right voice of a writer to put that on the page. And we just never got it right till Anthony came along, Anthony McCartan, and he just put it all together. And then we just saw it. We just saw where the movie was going to go and where we wanted it to go. And there's always changes. It's right up until the end, we were still kind of playing around with the film because it is a very complicated story to tell. So why do you think Queen's music has 
withstood this huge legacy and is so remarkable still today? What is it about their music that you think stands the test? Of I think it's their sound, and I think it's I think you know they created music that brought people together, and I think that's what made it timeless. When you get in a room with 20,000 people and start hearing We Are The Champions, We Will Rock You, these kind of songs, Bohemian Rhapsody, it just brings you together. And I wanted to create that in a theatrical world and thought if we could have people go to the theater, in, to the theater and just join together for that two hours, then we create something special. Not everyone is a star, Freddie. What are you afraid of? You can't get anywhere pretending to be someone you're not. Do you regret it? No one will play Queen. All right, we are now here at Carnaby Street, and we are about to set off the lights for Bohemian Rhapsody. Let's set it off. So, who's excited to be switching on the Bohemian Rhapsody lights? Please welcome to the stage, Adam Leach, who plays Paul Pretner. Please welcome Joe Mazzello, who plays John. Ben Hardy, who plays Roger. Gwilym Lee, who plays Brian. Lucy Voigtson, who plays Mary Austin. And Remy Manning, who plays Freddie! Good evening. One more time for the cast of this fantastic movie. How lovely to see you all. Thanks for coming out to play. Um, so, how does it feel to be here? I've got to stop you and say this is just unreal. This is, I, I, I could have never imagined anything like this. This is so spectacular. How, how do you feel? How are you guys feeling tonight? Yeah. There are only two people missing from this stage. Yes, please go crazy for the ones, the only, Brighton May and Roger Taylor! Good evening, gentlemen. Roger and Brian, everybody. How lovely. <laughs> Gentlemen, a warm welcome to Carnaby London. This is so lovely. Uh, all your fans are just so pleased to see you. They're, they're here. Uh, Brian and Roger, they're over here as well. And of course, all across here. Give a big wave. An absolute pleasure. So, uh, we have everybody we need. Shall we get down to the business of counting backwards from 10 to 1 and then pressing a giant red button? Shall we do that? <laughs> Guys, if I get you all lined up here, that would be wonderful. We'll begin the countdown all together. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, yes!
Bohemian Rhapsody premiere. It is pandemonium here at Wembley Stadium. A lot of people here. I heard something like 7,000 people or some shit supposed to be here, so we'll see. Uh, it looks jam-packed though. Alright, so we're here at the uh, Bohemian Rhapsody premiere. Uh, it is a lot of people out there. Long press line, everybody's uh, starting to make their way in for the big show uh, here at Wembley. It's pretty crazy, very, very packed. I guess I didn't make that abundantly clear already. Um, it's gonna be fun to see the movie again. So, you should definitely go see it. It's good. No bullshit. Do you like Queen? Who doesn't like Queen? Who likes Queen? Come on. Let's go see the movie. Queen, and I love Freddie Mercury, and uh, they called me up and they said, Would you like to be in a movie called Bohemian Rhapsody about Queen and Freddie Mercury? And they said, Just uh, tell me when and what to wear. My answer was a firm yes before I even read the script. Obviously, a different experience you mentioned. I like, approached this movie as such a fan of the band as opposed to it just sort of going, oh, a job in a movie. Did it feel special? Well, you know, the um, first movie I ever did was Man's World. I fought very hard for Bohemian Rhapsody to be the song. You were the one to say it. You're a legend, Fred. We're all legends. <laughs> 